SA Shipyards was founded in the late 1960s by a Dutch naval architect called Mr. Barnes, and it was to establish a large shipbuilding and ship repair capability in Southern Africa. And then it was taken over by uh, a company called uh, Sandok Austral, which then began the naval shipbuilding program. So it became a, a purely a defense uh, shipbuilding and ship repair company. From there, it, uh, Ocean Co came in and they did a, a series of luxury yachts and we produced a high level of internationally sort of acclaimed uh, hulls uh, for the international luxury yacht market. And then in 2006, uh, the new shareholders took it off, led by uh, the father of black economic empowerment, Mr. Donum Kunazi, and that's when we restarted a mothballed shipyard. And in 2007, we got our first contracts with Transnet, and we are here today. We have our CEO, who's Prishi Miraj, who runs the business and manages it on the top level. But besides that, we've got a management committee team. And our management committee is basically the voice of the company as well. So we represent each of our departments. But it's not just representing the people below us. Those people also have a voice. And it's the ability to understand, yes, there's an open door policy. And very much so, we listen to what people want. And it's what actually forms the basis and the foundation for where we actually try and lead from. I always say that uh, I am the lead of the organization, but each one of you also lead a management team. So I consider myself a leader of leaders. So leadership must permeate the entire organization. It must not be confined to myself or the management committee. So that's very critical for me because we all must be accountable and responsible for delivering on the company's vision and mission and values, and more importantly, the socioeconomic impact it is having on our society. I remember when I joined, we had a pair as our core values. There was evolution of values from pair, which is perseverance, exceptionalism, achievement and reward, mm. to sphere, sphere, which was safety, perseverance, exceptionalism, achievement and reward. The safety means people first, yes. because mm. we work in a, mm. in a highly industrialized environment. It is a dangerous environment. Mm. So when you put the S, that means you're putting the human life first. first. I think in terms of hiring of people, we always look for people that are passionate about what they do. We must be able to see that, yes, they're going to bring it into the company. And it's going to motivate not just themselves, but every other person that works under them. When we hire, we also look at the, the issues of diversity. So you've got a people who are old, people who are young, people who are or male people who are female, people who are local, people who are international. And I think that leads to the cross-pollination mm, of ideas, that which is so yeah. critical. That's one of, one of the most important ethos that we can do that's going to prove the longevity of the business. So for us, that's, that's fairly critical um, mm. in getting the younger generation involved in shipbuilding, ship repair, and seeing the ability to manufacture these, these very large <laughs> marine structures. And I think one cannot talk about the successes of Southern African shipyards without mentioning our world famous artisan training program. I think we have always had the largest artisan training program in the marine engineering industry in South Africa. Together with our existing artisans, we'll have more than 100 artisans under training and in addition to the artisans we also take the graduate engineers these are young uh, boys and girls with MSc and BSc degrees in engineering they're doing things that are exciting innovative and when they finish their three-year internship program I think they can work anywhere in the world as a team we listen to what our customers want and we deliver what they want and I think that's important. From my perspective, I always strive to be a customer-centric organization. You must deliver your project on time. You must deliver it at the quality that he expects. And you must deliver it within the budget that he expects. Those are the only three customer requirements. But you've got to keep your promises. Because when you keep your promise, you develop trust and integrity. With the customer satisfaction service, is it really helping us? We take those uh, reports seriously and come up with action plans to develop a, a better plan to improve. Instead of just being fair, now we need to be exceptional because that's our core value, to be exceptional in all that we do. We can all agree in the shipbuilding and ship repair industry, there are far more uh, challenges than successes. The trick is to ensure that, that your, your successes are so huge, it can carry you 
through the times when you're having challenges. And we have many challenges. Since the 2008-2009 downturn, uh, the shipping sector has been under tremendous pressure for, for an extended period of time, which has uh, led to a decrease in, in, in amounts spent on, on ship repairs. But through that and through learning, what, what does a client need, uh, redeveloping our, our pricing, redeveloping our customer-centric behavior, we managed to find niche uh, categories within the ship repair industry that we can we can service. What we have achieved in the past, our track record, so the ability to build these large complex vessels. Not only um, the complexity of a single vessel, but the ability to deliver nine vessels uh, consecutively. South African Shipyards has that capability of building world-class vessels uh, in South Africa and the delivery. And uh, through these projects, we've, also, we've been able to move on to larger projects and have the confidence. I think in life, you can have a very positive view, you can have a very jaded view. As you all know, I'm the eternal opt optimist. So I look at successes and challenges as part of the same coin. It's just a different side. Challenges force innovation. Challenges force change. And those things enable you to be more globally competitive. Within the ship repair unit, we have uh, the first Indian female project manager stands her ground in a male-dominated industry um, and has proved uh, very successful. With the boiler makers, with the fitters, we've got female in every section of our process. And I think and from where we know, started, we started with seven people, seven yeah. females. And today we've actually got about 30 percent, actually I'm lying, it's actually 38 mm. percent female. So from our external client, um, what they see is a, a new age South African uh, company, black owned, 67% woman black owned company that is delivering on, on their promises, delivering on their contracts, which is a reckoned second to none in South Africa. And, and through that baseline, we're able to move now into an internationally African competitive market. We just spoke about challenges and adversity, and I said, uh, out of challenges and adversity, you find opportunity. So when we analyze the business, when we analyze the market, both locally, nationally, and internationally, we realize that one cannot divorce a traditional industry like shipbuilding and ship repair from the two main driving forces that are affecting us at a global level. And those two forces are uh, climate change and the fourth industrial revolution. We have now decided we're gonna evolve into a proper technology company. So South Africa is no more a passing trade destination, but an actual destination where you go to do these large complex projects. And Charlie, we were talking about the conversion of ships from HFO to dual fuel or LNG. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I mean, the IMO, uh, International Maritime Organization, has uh, uh, various mechanisms um, in order to address climate change. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is, is the uh, ballast water exchange programs. Uh, this, this requires all ballast water on vessels uh, to be treated before it's, it's uh, put back basically into local uh, ecosystems. This all has to happen by 2020. So we have the ability now to, uh, to enter this market, uh, provide engineering services and do the installation of these systems in South Africa. To this point we've made alliances with N Natal University um, and trying to integrate their engineering uh, faculty with, with our ship repair industry. The cooperation with the University of KwaZulu-Natal is very critical because that has now made us uh, form another division of organization called SAS Innovation and Learning. And that's a research and development organization. We are looking at training young people so you have the right skills. We'll be looking at new innovative products so that you can sell them not only in South Africa, not only be reliant on government business, but to the international market with special emphasis on the African market. And if we get more like-minded leaders to join us, I think our country will have this very bright and prosperous future. I think for me the word would be family and the reason I say family is because when you go home you're sitting with your family and you actually want to feel part of something so when you go to work you need to be part of something so coming to work feels like you're going back to your family yes we do have our challenges but it's the fact that we actually group together and like a family we stand together mm -hmm. and we drive this business forward and just the same we always do it together. On my side, the culture change, the culture of the organization, of the old ways of doing things, and the new ways and the technology and the systems that we bring into, into the company, we're not working in silos. 
that culture is really changing and I enjoy that about Southern African shipyards. So groundbreaking. Um, we have set uh, new norms of operating a shipbuilding and ship repair business within South Africa. It puts us in, in, a, in, a, in a different uh, field of, uh, of companies um, and for me that plays an integral part of my psyche in being able to be part of this uh, company. I think my word is disruptive. I, I consider myself a disruptor for the very sim simple reason. The world is changing and we cannot do the old things and expect new results. In order to change that cycle, to create a more sustainable business, you've got to disrupt the industry. But I think if we all uh, CEOs, all leaders within the South African market begin to think in a disruptive manner, we can be a hugely successful nation. I challenge all my fellow leaders, dare to be different.